To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I know I've talked about the new wood stove that we have. You can buy these at Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's. You can buy really expensive ones like I think they're called Englander. And these are the top of the line modern technology. And so I understand that a lot of people are used to the grandma and grandpa's wood stove. I get it. You know, I was talking to my dad, and my dad burned wood his entire life. Up to what, maybe 10 years ago, he's burned firewood. And we were talking about firewood, and he says, oh yeah, you always want to cut firewood in the fall of the year you're gonna use it. Because the moisture in the wood slows down the burning process, and you don't use quite as much firewood. I know exactly what he's talking about. Right down here at the camper, I've installed a Franklin wood stove. They were made in the 60s. It has holes in it and gaps and it's, it's terrible. I took a lot of time trying to seal everything up and it still burns firewood in about six hours, which is better than the three hours it was doing last spring. So it's not efficient. Now this thing they say can take a load of wood and it lasts eight to 12 hours. And this little stove can heat an area of 200 square feet and it's got the zones you know there's different zones throughout the United States that you can use now this little house is just under 200 square feet now there is an adjustment that says it on it that you can use and it's right down here and so it says up to 2,000 square feet so I'm pretty sure based on everything that I've read that I can get it to cool down enough that it won't heat us out now I know I've talked about this thing several times in previous videos but the question keeps coming up i just got a comment from a guy in alaska telling me i know everything about firewood i live in alaska that tells you anything well it doesn't tell me anything because everything he said goes against exactly everything that i researched about this stove and the instructions on the stove you look up the youtube videos on this people are heating 800 square foot house a thousand feet square house square foot house with a cord of wood. People are telling me, no, 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 you're gonna need eight, 10 cords of wood per year. I know, I've done firewood my entire life. Well, it's just, it's not connecting. To me, there's something wrong. If you're using eight to 10 cords of firewood and you're telling me you're using one of these things, well, that's the only thing you're telling me is that you've, you've destroyed it, you've ruined it. There is what I'm calling a catalytic converter in here. It's, it's right here, there's two of them. And I've said it before in previous videos. I know that people are gonna say, Rob, you're repeating yourself. But I have to repeat myself because the comment section clearly indicates that you're not gathering what I'm saying. These get catalytic converters take the smoke, the white smoke that you see coming out of the chimney, and burns that material. That white smoke that you're seeing is wooden particles. And so it these catalytic converters get hot, the smoke comes up, hits them and it burns that material. So the primary heat source coming from the stove is the smoke. It's taking all that material and cooking it. And that's where you get your heat from. Now, the, the, the other big key is, is that all your seals are really nice and tight. There's a test you can do. You're supposed to put a piece of paper right here against the wall, you close it up, seal it, and if you can pull that piece of paper out, then your, your gasket material isn't working. And there's gasket material all around. There's, Gas material on the door, around the ashtray right here. And that keeps the air from coming in. See, air, oxygen, you, you, want, you want to keep oxygen out so you're not just burning wood that you don't want to burn. So you're really controlling the temperature nowadays with these, these type of stoves. Simply with the vent I told you about before, the little vent. You can control the temperature. If you want it to be hotter, you pull that out a little bit more and it feeds more oxygen into it. And then if you shut it, it, it reduces the oxygen. This thing is so efficient that it now has a little vent pipe in the back that you actually have to run outside because it will suck the oxygen from outside. Otherwise, it will draw so much oxygen from inside the house that you'll start feeling breezes through the windows and little cracks and crevices that you have throughout the house. So it is a 84% efficient. One of the things that I have repeatedly said that you have to do is you have to make sure that your wood is dry. This is in the instructions. The instruction says that your wood has to be less than 20% moisture content. It also says that your wood has to dry for one year. 
Well, I was absolutely surprised by people actually questioning the instructions. Now, I have seen videos on this. There's this one YouTuber who went through a whole series of videos talking about how to dry firewood, different ways and methods of stacking firewood. There's some where you can stack it in a circular stack and it's supposed to draw air in. And then there's these regular stacks of wood where you just kind of stack them on top of each other in long lines. And he determined that this was the best. He's using scientific methods and young guy. I just thought it was absolutely incredible all the things he knew about firewood. But the thing he had to do was he had to dismiss all the things that he learned growing up, just like me. So I can't move into the house right now because my firewood is not dry enough. I just started cutting it like back in May. What I had to do was I had to go out and buy a moisture tester to see if I could actually use this thing. I want to talk to you a little bit about the moisture tester. Okay, sorry I can't get myself in the picture with the moisture tester, so I'll just show you the moisture tester. Now you can get these on Amazon pretty cheap. This one I think was 25, 28 bucks, something like that. It wasn't the cheapest and obviously it wasn't the most expensive. I just got the medium range. And what I was really focused on was that it had a good set of instructions that I could read and good customer reviews. This one had really good customer reviews. It's, it's Tavu, so T-A-V-O-O-L. It doesn't matter, pick your own. But this moisture tester tests moisture on anything. It's used primarily for, with construction workers. They can come in your house and see if you got a mold problem. They can come in and test the, your walls and different things. But it's also designed to test firewood. I was actually surprised by someone telling me that you cannot get firewood below 20% because the humidity in the air, you know, right now it's raining outside. So that means that what, we got 100% humidity, 90% humidity. So according to the guy who messaged me, thinks that this thing should have 90% because the wood is sucking up the moisture. That's just not true. Otherwise, think about your house. You got your two by sixes sitting here, your house would be falling it down because it would be always wet. Of course, you're trying to keep it dry, right? So I've got three different pieces of wood here. I've got a piece of poplar tree that I cut down, I think in June. Now they said that this should be dry. When I Googled it, it said it should be dry in three to six months. Well, here it is October. So it's, it's well on its way. It should be dry. And the other piece I have here is a piece of deadfall. I've cut down a lot of deadfall. Some of it is really dry, others is not. So I can't really depend on using it this winter. I'd have to test almost every piece just to see. So it'd be better if I just waited. And then I have a piece here that I just cut down two days ago uh, from the city park. You probably saw that video. I'd... Now each piece of this, uh, I split. So because you're supposed to split the center of the wood. So I split it so I could expose the center to find out what the actual moisture content is inside, not on the outside. Obviously, if it's a nice dry, hot day, the outside is going to be really dry. If it's wet outside and it's been rained on, then it's going to be wet. So you want to test it in the center. This moisture tester tests all kinds of different materials and there's a whole list on the instructions. That's why I wanted to buy a tester with really good instructions. So it tells you every type of tree there is and which setting this needs to be on. So you just turn it on, there's a nice little backlighting on it. It has your temperature on it, 59 degrees. And right now it is set for forestry, you know, a little tree. Of course, you can set it to your house. And then all you gotta do is you take these very sharp probes and you stab it into the wood. You don't have to stab it very hard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what a fresh piece of wood looks like. It's gonna be hard to show you because I don't know if it's gonna show up on the camera, but I'll do my best. So this says that it is 29% moisture. So a piece that is brand new. Now this tree fell down in the, in the spring. I would say it probably fell down in June. So it's October, I've cut off a piece and it's almost 30% moisture. Now that's about where all firewood is, about 30% when it's first cut down 30 to 40%. Now the poplar wood that I cut down in the spring and I split, so it should, it's been sitting around for a while. It's supposed to be dry, but it's not. It's 
so it's not that dry either. Now finally, this is a piece of deadfall that I, uh, I cut again in the spring, and when I test it, it comes up to 15%. So this is dry enough that I can use. Now the problem is the piece of wood that I used right underneath it, I tested two, I grabbed two, one on top of each other, and it was right at 22%. So it's not quite dry enough. So my thinking was is I better not burn anything in the wood stove this year. Otherwise I'd have to test every piece of wood that I put in it. And that's just a lot of splitting. You know, I got to split it all again and, and test it. So I'm just gonna wait another year. So I hope that helps you understand these new modern wood stoves, it might actually get you to think about a cheaper method or an off-grid method of heating your home. Thanks for watching.